now you're gonna come. Now you're gonna come. All right, come on, come on. Hello. For those of you who watched my last video, you will have heard the little announcement that I made. As a recap for anyone who missed that, I have started training to become a boat safety examiner. Firstly, what is the boat safety scheme? It's an initiative owned by the Canal and River Trust and the Environments Agency. And the purpose of it is basically to ensure that boats on the inland waterways are safe. It looks at fire, explosion and pollution risks, risks to individual boats, neighbouring boats, neighbouring property, other canal and towpath users, and it gathers data of incidents that have happened and sets out a list of criteria for all boats to meet, to comply with, to be safe and all boats or the majority of boats on inland waterways in Britain have to have a boat safety scheme certificate and you're tested every four years and given this certificate. Some people liken it to an MOT for boats but that's not exactly what it is. It's specifically looking at safety issues related to fire pollution and explosion so it's nothing to do with kind of seaworthiness um, and it's not marked against other rules or laws like the ISO or um, SOLAS or anything like that it's purely ensuring that boats meet the criteria set out by the boat safety scheme I hope I've explained that properly so the role of the examiner is to come and do the inspections on the boats issue the certification or give advice if a boat is falling short from the criteria and also another role of the examiner and of the scheme is to educate people basically about ways to keep themselves and other people safe and to try and keep customers up to date with changing rules and regulations that sort of thing um there's a big long list of checks that the examiners need to do and it's very specific about um, how they need to check that, whether it's just visually or they need to physically check things. So you'd be looking at um, tightness testing on the gas appliances, um, like things to do with battery storage, the electrical systems. It's a very, very long list of different things that need to be checked during an examination. Uh, so what made me want to become an examiner? Someone commented actually on a couple of my videos asking if I was going to do um, BSS examinations and I thought, oh, that would be an interesting thing to do. And I remember having seen a post on Facebook in um, a women's boater group where they said that they were changing the criteria for examiners and they were looking for new examiners. It used to be um, a bit of a closed shop kind of situation. You needed to have worked within the industry and on boats for a lot of years before you could be considered um, to become an examiner and they've recently changed the criteria for what they're looking for and it's made it a little bit more open and a bit more accessible for people who might not necessarily have had those years of industry experience but would have other um, transferable knowledge and skills to enable them to do the role. So I went on the BSS website, filled in an expression of interest form, and within a couple of minutes of sending that off, I actually got a phone call from them. And the rest of it has whizzed by in such a blur. It's been a really whirlwind um, situation going on. And uh, one of the ladies from BSS rung me and said that they really liked my CV and that they were actively recruiting women and um, people in my geographical area. Because of the way that it was structured in the past, they've never had a woman do this role. And there are five of us training on this year. We'd be the first ever women to be BSS examiners. And while, of course, that is a victory, I also think it's a bit embarrassing as well that it's 2023 and we're still talking about this is the first time a woman's done such and such job. Um, but that's by the by. 
so yeah she said she really liked my cv and i haven't done my diploma in small craft surveying meant that i met the criteria um to be accepted onto the course that they'd like to offer me a place on the training course subject to a technical interview um, and they were actually right at the end of the recruitment process and I was the last person to be offered a place on the course this year so um, I think that's why everything's happened really really quickly um, everybody else applied um, a while ago and they've all these next steps happened over a longer period of time for them but for me because I applied so late the whole process has happened in a space of about two weeks um, so yeah, so I'm still kind of getting my head around it. Uh, they sent me some videos that I needed to watch and then a few days later I had a technical interview and that consisted of 16 different questions to see if I would meet the criteria to be on the course and look at any areas that I might need some more support from. Uh, so after I passed the interview there were lots more phone calls lots more emails um i had another interview after that with the managers from the course just to kind of get to know me a little bit better and to make sure i fully understood what i was getting into but yeah that was all fine and i've now officially started the training and the training is partly online and partly in person they've released a couple of online modules already just like the introductory things before we get into the real nitty gritty of it. Um, and they'll release a few modules at a time as we go along. And the in-person training, um, it's two weeks at um, the Broads Authority in Norwich, one week in May, I think, um, and then another week later on in the course. And in between those two weeks, there's a two day course on LPG and that's in Evesham. I didn't even know where Evesham was until I got accepted on this course. It's in the Cotswolds somewhere. So that'd be nice to go and see somewhere new and learn some new skills. The training is gonna be very, very intense. There'll be long days and um, there'll probably be some extra reading and learning required to make sure that I get up to the standard that's expected and pass all of the assessments. Once I've finished all of the training, then you have a final assessment on a boat where basically you conduct an examination and someone observes you doing that. And if you meet the criteria, then you can go out and do inspections by yourself. Um, for the first year of doing that, you get some extra support from the BSS whilst you're a newly qualified examiner. And they will also assign you with a mentor um, who will be someone that is an established BSS examiner. Um, you can go to that person uh, for a bit of help and support and they will check in with you periodically just to make sure that you're getting on okay and you can express any concerns with them or just get some reassurance. I'm really looking forward to starting the training and I'm not underestimating the the workload and the difficulty but I'm looking forward to the challenge as well, looking forward to meeting all of the other trainees. If I am successful and pass all of the training, which hopefully I do, then I should be qualified around about September time and then I can get out and start doing some examinations which I'm really looking forward to. And I know a question that a few people have asked me in real life and some of you might be wondering whether I'm going to do this full time as my job. Uh, and that's not the plan at the moment. I love my job. I'm very happy there. However, it does kind of restrict me to, you know, one area, one company. And I've been doing it since I was 18 years old um, and in my current role for the last 11 years. So, you know, I want something else just to challenge the brain a little bit and, you know, give me some options. Maybe in the future I can look at some sort of job share or flexible working situation. And it's always good to have a fallback plan, I think. Initially, I'll just be doing it alongside my full time job um, and I'll see how I manage to balance that and then we can look at it again 
um, once I'm a bit more experienced and established. But the main thing is that I need to pass the training, so that needs to be my number one focus at the moment. Hopefully I've given a broad overview of what the training is going to entail, what the job is. If there's anything else that I've missed out or any questions that you've got, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try and keep you updated along the way, bring you to the training with me. But for now, uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you again very, very soon.